you read that title correctly. You can murder children in this game by uh, using them as a pseudo live ammunition. Uh, it might be a little closer to puppy murder than child murder when you consider the character designs, and uh, that doesn't make the notion any better. July 29th, 2021, CyberConnect 2 released Fuga with generally favorable reviews from critics. Despite positive reviews, Fuga fell short of covering its development costs. Not only was there no physical release, but there was also little to no marketing for the game. Despite all that, Fuga Melodies of Steel 2 is right around the corner with a launch date a single day behind Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. That sounds like a mistake to me, but I'm not a developer, so what do I know? Now what exactly is Fuga about, and what does it play like? Fuga is a turn-based role-playing game set in a war-ravaged world where a village is destroyed by the fascist Jer... Berman Empire. The children who survived this attack stumble across a gigantic tank known as the Tyrannus. The Tyrannus is a relic of an ancient but technologically advanced civilization. I remember when me and my friends were walking through the woods and we just happened to stumble across an ancient super weapon. Those were good times. So anyway, they board this tank and begin traveling across this dangerous landscape to rescue their families who were taken prisoner by the Jer Bermans. And inside of this tank is a great big beast of a weapon with an incredibly edgy name and a messed up gimmick to accompany it. The Soul Cannon. Using this weapon guarantees victory, but in return you have to feed the soul of one of these children into the heart of the weapon. And if you have any sympathy whatsoever, it's going to make you feel like a complete piece of shit for doing so. When you're playing through the game's introductory phase, you are forced to make this decision at least one time with some unique interactions to accompany said choice. None of them are good options. You are still sacrificing a literal child. When the game is done bait and switching you to show you the impact of your actions and it rewinds time back to before your big confrontation that demands that decision, you're brought back to the child you sacrificed aboard the death machine they're parading around in with tears still in their eyes, unknowing of what had just transpired, unknowing as to why they're crying in the first place. And you're only brought back to that point after the remaining children aboard the Tyrannus have given up all hope. The despair of having lost a dear friend too great a weight to bear, they remain a stationary target, cannon fodder for enemy reinforcements. Using the soul cannon is meant as an absolute last resort, and without having suffered enough damage during a fight, the Tyrannus will not even allow you to access the use of the weapon. And just because the Tyrannus has allowed you to use its super weapon, does not mean that you have to use it. You have ample time during your combat phase to recover or dish out any last minute additional damage that may need be done. The loss of loved ones and the horrors of war are at the constant forefront of the game's theme and are contrasted substantially by everything else that takes place between battle. Aboard the Tyrannus and outside of a combat scenario, you'll be able to tackle various menial tasks that will make your life as well as your crewmates easier and more livable. Work on the farm, prepare a meal in the kitchen, wash some laundry, fish for junk over the side of the tank, upgrade the weaponry on that very same tank, sleep, go on small expeditions, find upgrade materials, but most importantly, talk to the other characters. As the children communicate with each other, their relationships improve, as does their ability to work with each other in combat. When characters have gotten to know each other well enough, you'll trigger a link event, which is basically just a short story segment where the characters have a little back and forth. If the link events aren't enough to chew on, CyberConnect's YouTube channel hosts a selection of 25 shorts that are just a little bit more animated than what you would see in-game. While we're on the subject of additional Fuga media, there is a manga adaption of the game's overarching plot. It is, however, Japanese only, and with the niche title that it is, it hasn't received any sort of fan translation, as far as I'm aware. Which sucks, because I would read it. When the children are on the battlefield, things are a little different. You pilot the Tyrannus and control the various paths that it can travel down, ranging from dangerous to less so. Traveling along a dangerous path is generally going to net you higher rewards, and they're the paths I stuck with the majority of the game. Because while it does have its moments, the game isn't awfully difficult. In combat, the Tyrannus has three different types of weapons. A light machine gun, a medium grenade launcher, and a heavy cannon. Color coordinated in blue, yellow, and red, respectively, for your convenience. Every child specializes in a specific weapon, and while they're in the gunner's seat, that's the weapon you'll have access to during their turn. You'll have three gunners at any given time, and three supporting characters to back them up. Ideally, you're pairing characters together who have been bonding with each other as the bonuses provided will be higher than otherwise. Note that every few turns, you can swap the children in the gunner or support seats around with any of the others aboard the Tyrannus. So, if you need access to a specific character abilities sooner than later, or you want to fire three heavy cannon volleys at the same time, it's a quick hot swap away. Enemy units also have specific weaknesses to various types of weaponry indicated by the small clock icons. Firing upon the enemy with the correct weapon delays their turn and gives you further time to act before they're able to do the same. Additionally, the machine gun has the highest accuracy while the cannon has the lowest, so it's going to be quite difficult to hit any particularly mobile unit with your higher damage weaponry. Occasionally, you will see units with armor that reduces any damage received, and thankfully, with the right skill usage, we can 
shred that armor and do just as much damage to that unit as we would do to anything else. But it's going to cost SP, which we do have a limited pool of. Not that you should have to worry too much if you're out of SP. You should have a few items that can restore that that can be used in combat. Same for HP if you don't feel like using a healer. Skills can do other things, of course, like pumping out buffs and debuffs. Really, it's all standard RPG fare. Save for the defend action, which does work just a tiny bit different. When you take the defend action, you reduce damage from the next attack, unless the turn order rolls back around to the character you defended with, in which case you stop defending. You can always reinitiate it if need be, but this mechanic allows you to keep the assault up with the other weaponry. Next we have link attacks, which is one of the big results of the children getting to know each other better. When the gunner and the support unit have been fighting with one another on the field long enough, they'll be able to launch one of these attacks with their own specialized and unique effects. That's not the only unique ability that they have, though. When a character is in a good mood, they have a higher chance to activate hero mode, and hero mode gives that character a buff that's specific to them for a set amount of turns. It's also a pretty neat idea that more games should consider implementing. Truth be told, I'm not an avid enjoyer of turn-based games. That's not to say that there aren't exceptions, I'd consider Chrono Trigger one of my favorite games of all time, and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door was also incredibly good. I don't think Fuga is better than either of those games in the grand scheme of things, but Fuga is still one of the more enjoyable turn-based titles I have played, and an amazing game built by an amazing team as a product of passion. If you don't know the development staff, CyberConnect2 is responsible for the development of Ashura's Wrath, Kakarot, the Dot .hack games, Bandai notably works with them quite a bit. The musical score in Fuga is fantastic, and lands perfect with every tonal shift in the script. There's likely a track from the game playing right now, labeled at the bottom left, and it's probably a banger. There's also this level of whiplash when you're fishing and eating and you're just talking to your friends, enjoying their company, learning about each other, only to not long after be whisked away to this dark reality, fighting behind enemy lines as a child soldier, wondering which friend you'll have to sacrifice next. And it's that whiplash that makes it stand out and feel unique among other games of its like. Needless to say, I am excited to get my hands on the sequel, even if I'm not super stoked about their chosen launch day. And hey, if you've made it to the end of this video somehow, then you're awesome, and I really appreciate it. If you'd like to hit the like or subscribe buttons now so that I know you've enjoyed the time spent with me, that's appreciated too. Not required, but appreciated. This is still a small channel, but with the help of friends like you that I hopefully won't be required to stuff into a cannon anytime soon, it can grow a lot bigger. Until next time.